Have you ever had trouble working with dates and constraints in Bubble? Well, rest assured, you're not alone. Working with dates in Bubble can get tricky from time to time. So I wanted to make a quick tutorial to show how we at Momentum Group manipulate dates with constraints on Bubble. Stay tuned for more. Hey everyone, my name is Aaron Baker and I'm a developer here at Momentum Group. And uh, we are a no-code agency with a primary focus on Bubble development. So as I mentioned, in today's tutorial, we're going to go over some mm, slightly more advanced scheduling logic that you can use to build um, whatever scheduling feature that you have in your next bubble application. Okay, great. So here's the problem that we're looking at solving today. So let's say we're building a scheduling application for a doctor's office. And at this doctor's office, uh, they only onboard new patients on Mondays. So Every time a, a patient books an appointment, they're going to schedule them for the first Monday out. However, if someone tries to book an appointment on Thursday or later, then we're going to need to schedule them for the Monday after next. Uh, reason being, like, we're not going to have enough time buffer in order to prepare for them for this upcoming Monday if they book on a Thursday or a Saturday. So let's just book them ahead uh, to the Monday after next. Okay, let's see how we do that. Next slide. Oh, okay. okay. Let me just go back here and uh, okay, a little bit of technical difficulties. I'll just drag this bad boy over there and then I'll just drag this down here. Okay. Cool. Okay, so we're going to go uh, through this problem in three steps. So step one, uh, we're going to get today's date or the scheduled from date. Uh, two, we're going to need to determine how far into the future we schedule our appointment. And step three, we're just going to take the difference between the days and add it to our current date or our schedule from date. So a bit of things, a couple of things you need to know about dates. Uh, I'm not going to dive too deep into it today's tutorial, but um, at all time in bubble, uh, you can understand as time. Basically time in seconds, time in milliseconds. It's just time. So it doesn't actually store dates or you know days or months everything is just different time periods so when we're looking at days of the week um, days of the week are actually assigned an index value um, from zero to six zero being sunday six being saturday so basically we want to find day one um, either seven days in the future or 14 days in the future uh, depending on the day that we're booking the appointment. Okay. So here are the variables that we're going to be using today. So we have we'll have get date, which is equivalent to the starting date, and that's stored as a date type. Get day, which is the day of the week, so index values zero to six, and that's going to be stored as type number. Add days determines how far into the future we're going to be scheduling, and that's again type number. Get day diff, or the difference between the days, is just the number of days between the start date and the desired date. And then set date is our actual target date or the desired schedule date. Great. Okay, let's pop over to the editor now and see how we calculate this problem. So here we are in the editor, and here is the group which will be sorry, which will will be calculating uh, the scheduled two date value. So here's the time and date picker, and then here's the output box where it will show the scheduled to date. And then here is the box that just represents the, um, the actual variable calculations as we go through this logic. So you can think about this as console logging the values uh, as we make our way through the calculation. And here, this tiny little pixel is actually the date and time calculator uh, reusable element. Now, the reason I put the calculations into a reusable element is because um, for this application, I needed to run this calculation on multiple pages. So as opposed to, you know, writing every single workflow and action step on every page that I need to calculate this formula on, I put it, I place it in a reusable element so I can drag and drop the calculation or formula uh, on whichever page that I wanted to use it. So let's head over to the reusable element now to take a look at the action steps. 
so here uh, is the custom event that will be will be triggering once we set the date and time picker with a value. So here is the custom state. So the first one is we're actually taking today's date, which will be the the date and time picker's value, and we're extracting the day of the week. So if it's a Monday, then we'll extract one. If it's a Friday, then we'll extract five. So here is the number of days that we'll be adding to today's date, uh, depending on when we schedule the appointment on. So if it's booked on a Thursday or after, Thursday to Saturday, then we will be adding 15 days. If it's booked on a Sunday or between a Monday and a Wednesday, then we're actually adding eight days. So you can skip this step here, but this is again, just a representation of console logging, the number of days between our schedule from date and our set date. So here is the get day difference. So we're actually taking the number of days that we're going to add and we're subtracting it from the indexed day value that we've scheduled on. So for this instance, we're, we actually have a condition here. So when the day is not Sunday, then we're going to run this step. And this step is just, again, taking the number of days that we're adding and we're subtracting it by the day, the, the schedule from day's indexed value. So again, if it's on a Sunday that we're taking the number of add days, which is eight minus, sorry, uh, we, we don't run this on a Sunday. We actually run this when it's not Sunday. Uh, so we'll take, for instance, an eight, subtract one if we booked on a Monday, and then we'll get the day difference value. So when it, again, is not a Sunday, uh, we'll target, we'll schedule the, um, the booking date. So we'll equivalent that to, we'll set that to set date. And we'll add the schedule from date plus the number of days. So this is a great modifier that Bubble actually has built in. So we'll add the number of days and the number of days that we'll be adding is the get, get day difference. So the difference between the schedule from date and the index date value. So this is the step that we run when we do schedule on a Sunday. And basically we're not going to be using this variable get day diff. We'll just take the get date plus the number of days. And that number of days is just going to be the add days, which is scheduled here uh, when the get day is zero. Okay, let's hop over to the um, application now and then run this through the debugger so we can see the exact steps um, as they run. Perfect. Okay, so here we are in the application again, and we're going to take this through the debugger so we can see every step being calculated. So let's say we're, getting, we're scheduling on a Wednesday. So here is the Wednesday. So we're actually setting the get date state that's held on the reusable date calculator. So we're setting as January 12th. We're then going to trigger the custom event, which is the actual calculation. We're going to grab the index day value from that date. So date calculators, sorry, date calculators get date, which is set to 12, uh, January 12th. We're extracting that day, which is the third, which is a Wednesday. We're again then skipping this step because we're not booking on a Thursday or after. We're skipping this step because we're not scheduling on a Sunday. And then here we have the actual days that we're going to be adding. This is just a representation of the index day value as a negative. So here is the output of add days, subtract this value uh, to get six. I'm oh, sorry, to get five. Um, that's from a previous run of the calculation. So we get five here. Then we're going to set the date of our new scheduled date. So you can see here the date calculators get date plus days, uh, which equals January 17th. And the number of days added is five. So January 12th plus five equals January 17th, which is our new scheduled to date. Great, so let's see how, how it works when we book on a Friday. So let's say we're booking on the 14th, we should get the 24th. 
So we book on the 14th, we get the 24th, uh, and then just for argument's sake, we'll take it through the debugger really quickly. Oops, and then we'll go through the same thing. Oops. Okay, let's schedule on the 21st. Okay, so get date is January 21st. We're running the custom event. Value is five because we're booking on a Friday. Uh, the number of days we're adding is 15 because we booked after Thursday. Uh, again, that's just a representation value. So the set dates, the get date difference value is set to 10 because we're taking the index, uh, the number of days that we're adding and we're subtracting the indexed value of the schedule from date, which again is Friday equivalent to five. The number of days that we're adding is 15 because we're booking two weeks away on a Monday. So 14 plus the index value of one, which is Monday uh, equals 15. Then we're setting the actual date, which is now January 31st. And then we have our output value. Great. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you if you stuck around to the end of this video. Uh, my name is Aaron and I'm a developer here at Momentum Group. Uh, a final word about working with any sort of niche functionality that may not have been solved on the bubble forum on anyone's website. Uh, just a quick tip is if you don't see it on bubble, you can always go over to JavaScript forums and see if someone has solved it there. Nine times out of 10 they have. And all you'd have to do is convert that JavaScript logic into bubble logic, uh, which most of the modifiers and um, calculations are the same just because bubble is built using JavaScript. And then you can apply that to your application. So for this example, I actually went over to this website where, as you can see, I use the same variables uh, in order to calculate the date. Uh, and I've just applied it using bubble logic. Now, if you want to take this a step further, you could use the math.js or the toolbox plugin to run the JavaScript in the application itself. Um, but obviously you need to know a little bit of JavaScript in order to do that. Uh, on a last, last note, uh, Momentum does have an academy starting up in the next couple months. So please check our link in the bio to learn more about that if you're interested. All right, again, my name is Aaron and we'll see you again next week with our next tutorial. Take care.